Want to make your own podcast? Spotify's got a platform that lets you make one super easy, then distribute it everywhere, and even earn money. All in one place for free. It's called Spotify for Podcasters. Here's how it works. Spotify for Podcasters lets you record and edit podcasts right from your phone or computer. So no matter what your setup is like, you can start creating today. Then you can distribute your podcast to Spotify and everywhere else podcasts are heard. Video podcasts are also available on Spotify. With Spotify for Podcasters, you can earn money in a variety of ways, including ads and podcast subscriptions. And best of all, it's totally free with no catch. Ever since I discovered Spotify for Podcasters, I feel like I have an outlet for the creativity and ideas I want to share with the world. I recommend you give it a try. We all have a voice, so share it with the world. Download the Spotify for Podcasters app or go to spotify.com slash podcasters to get started today. Welcome to the Days of Noah podcast, where we talk all things biblical, supernatural, and strange. Today we bring you a shorter episode where Tom Althaus and I got together to lay out the groundwork for our future conversations. So this is a bit of a teaser episode where you're going to hear us just start to scratch the surface of a lot of crazy topics Tom's incredible life story and we have some future episodes coming out guys so this is going to be a primer for those so you're not going to want to miss this but Tom and I discuss quite a bit even in just this intro and it won't be long before you will hear the full episodes of Tom and I and Luke discussing his incredible life story. As always, guys, please help us grow this podcast by sharing it with your family and friends and taking just a minute to leave a five-star review on Apple or Spotify. It really does help grow the channel and get it out to more people, and we appreciate each and every one of you listening out there. So let's get into getting to know Tom Althaus. give you a brief rundown of what I was thinking for tomorrow. All right, go ahead. So, I mean, I thought we could talk about childhood stuff. I know you've been over some of that, but I kind of wanted to know what you thought about, like, your parents, why why they singled you out so poorly. Mm -hmm. So maybe we could talk about some of that. And I know you said you had some generational, like, Freemasonry stuff. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. So that might play into it, too. Right. You know? And I wanted to also touch upon um, yeah. what I call visual indoctrination, which is yeah. a subject to certain visuals and, and scenes to work on your psyche to get you to finally accept horrors done on others. And it's supposed to get rid of empathy. <clears throat> they call it putting, wow. your, putting your feelings in the freezer. Yes, I heard, I heard you make that phrase. Okay. To remove empathy. And this is a like a mind control control technique? Very much nuts and bolts, how you like basically um change a person's soul or or worldview orientation uh one oh one. So this is the first thing you do to uh traumatize a child into getting to remold them uh into what you want to make them. And it's it's there's only a few of us that really can survive that process. Those of us that do would be still subject to the um, feelings of the horror of what we had seen. We'll, we'll never really come fully to terms with what we have been exposed to, but we do not lose, lose our heart in the process. The others that go through it and accept it seem fine, but they don't have empathy. They don't, they don't feel anymore. And the tactic is to actually accuse those that survive as being what they are, narcissist. So you can actually, you can actually condition narcissism. Right. Wow. And 
and is and does this stop short? And we'll get into it tomorrow, obviously. But does does that uh, goal and mind control does that stop short of splitting the personality through trauma based? It's a great question. Is that Pete? Great question. What I think is, um, you guys, I'm in. I'm always in the mode now of interview <laughs> speaking because that's the best way to confer information, even privately. So you end up like being a DJ that talks DJ to their loved ones. Oh, I know. So yeah. <laughs> So excuse my <clears throat> my demeanor or the way I present myself, but it's yeah, it's like we're on the air. No, it's great. So, but yeah, so um, repeat your question one more time so I can give it. To so, you. so does that is that kind of a smaller scale? Because when I think of like SRA, satan- satanic ritual mm-hmm. abuse, um, MK Ultra, mind control, and they're deliberately trying to split the personality okay. into fragments through trauma. Is is this kind of a much smaller scale of that? They're not necessarily splitting the personality. They're just trying to shape it in the way they want. It's a great question. Or, they're they're actually yeah. goal driven. So every time they spend with you is given a, a goal or, or attached to it. So basically, it's in an introductory mode. So your introductory phase where they will um, they have to like knead the bread before they bake it. So this kind of uh, indoctrination is a way to knead you into being uh, uh, receive receiving and pliable to what they want to throw next to condition you first they have yeah. to mold you and then they condition you and condition so, yeah. okay <clears throat> yeah it seems like yeah and i mean without knowing the full extent it seems like it's maybe not as deep as the trauma-based mind control where they're trying to split the personality and the right. personality is splitting in order to protect itself you know, but right. it sounds no less, you know, nefarious. <laughs> right. So we're talking about, I think this is so important. I'm glad you're bringing this or discussing this is mm-hmm. that <clears throat> we're looking at the very first <clears throat> thing a candidate goes through to be conditioned. So the very first thing a young child exposed to is very important, especially if we're going to help those people heal that survived yeah. it. They need to go back to the very beginning when they were first um, altered or given that mm-hmm. course. And um, mm-hmm. what's interesting is the trauma, basically that trauma never leaves you. It's deep seated. The images don't go away. And that's why I've been trying, like you may hear me say about layered thinking is the way I believe we can approach it in order to not to coin it, trademark it or whatever, just that there, yeah. there's a way I've seen that we can get a parachute to float away from their, um, their goal. Point. Yeah. So, yeah. Interesting. Yeah, I don't know how close that relates to SRA or or how much you're familiar with that, but that's something that like Luke's the one that first introduced me to that topic because um, one of the guys he looked up to, his name is Doug Riggs. He was a pastor and he was working with SRA victims for like 20 plus years. He passed away a couple years ago. But um, can you give me the nuts and what, bolts of it? Sorry. Yeah. Me. So so sat- satanic ritual abuse is like even from the womb uh in a lot of cases these children are bred for the purpose of dedicating them to satan and um using them in whatever way they want to whether it's um to have multiple personalities in order to control them and have them carry out certain functions um to have them be a part of you know, some sort of, uh, religious hierarchy, like, um, one girl that I'm going to have on in a few weeks on the show. Uh, she, she was told she was supposed to be like a mother of darkness, which is like, which is like one of the highest levels. That's Jesse. Uh, yeah, Jesse, exactly. You know that Jesse contacts me all the time. She sends me very No kidding. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I get very nice. We 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 just got something on the calendar. So that's really cool that you know her. Um, and I know Emma, that's her whole show is based on interviewing survivors, right? Emma does a fantastic job. And somehow like we're talking about, um, conditioning, right. As part of our, yes. And that's SRA and there's this, uh, also indoctrination thing, both. We're looking at different aspects of the same animal, which is great. It's important to study it. Emma is able to keep that layer. You'll hear me say that word a lot because it's the best way I can define it of a, I would almost describe it like I like dichotomies in language where expression, which is a fierce innocence. And the other side can't handle that. So Emma shows that 
um, presence of um, wide-eyed, but uh, indomitable, just right to the core. Dogged, yeah. So a dogged innocence is the biggest nightmare the other side can have. You, you, you know, you know what I, I, I would I would phrase that in biblical terms: mm. be wise as serpents, yes. but innocent as doves. Right? Exactly. Isn't that it? That's it. That's it. And that what she's doing is embodying that. Oh, we man. each are parts of the body, as it says. You know, scripture saying, yes. and she embodies that part. And That's um, so, when we really look at it, with apart from their conditioning. We free ourselves together to face them down. And the phrase they use is, other side has said that, that we face them down is what they they come at us for. And yep. so um, another element of that, I was just thinking before I just got on with you, was um, mm-hmm. they, they stick all these things in the films that we give silent consent. And then right. they take it to the level of fear to respond, fear to act means that we are uh, accepting. And that's what people need to realize. There is no hiding under a rock or shutting our doors to the horrors outside. We have to be on the battlefield uh, doing our part. Each of us has a part to play. And if one member is missing from that part, whether they're bought away or not showing up a no-show or hiding under a carpet, they are increasing the burden and workload for the rest of us instead of applying the talents God gave them to help us be the tool completely. And and that's the understanding as I've, you know, slowly evolving my own kind of theology, right, in light of the world and the Bible and everything, is that um, in, a, in large measure, it seems the way that God set up the world is, you're my ambassadors. And if the world gets messed up, it's because you're not inviting me into it. You've closed me off. So like you just said, you've increased the workload for the rest of us. The more, the more people that invite the darkness in, that's okay. Then the darkness gains power. You, we push back by inviting God in and pushing back against that. Now, now his side can gain power. And I think that that's, yeah, that's exactly it right there. Right now, darkness has a ton of gifts as rewards and honors, as that's the very phrase, rewards and honors, to offer everyone in order to bring us all together to divide us all. Basically, they bring us together to keep us apart. That's how darkness works. And they control us with different handlers and different people specifically assigned to high-level uh, people of interest that would have influence. I'm talking about people who are good that can have influence, like you're doing a broadcast that reaches many people. So you would be considered um, someone who has influence and that's what their big concern is. And so they shut that, those channels of influence down like a, a fearful spoiled kid, just like wanting to shut down their biggest fear one of another. And that is individuals then get hit. We saw that huge in COVID the way that they gaslighted everybody, uh, people getting deplatformed left and right. Right. You know, it was, it, it was Orwellian to the extreme. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, so I want to talk um, kind of on your childhood a bit and uh, Freemasonry, and then oh, my mom's calling. I'll call her back. <laughs> Aww, <laughs> um, just because, and I've heard you talk about the evidence for like with your case and and you know um, um, the screenplay uh, that became the Matrix. But maybe we can uh, spend five or ten minutes tomorrow. You can just lay out like your top, you know, five ten things to right. say. Okay. <laughs> this this is who i am and this right. is what i did right i know your website's still not up right it's still no it's still, still struck we're still trying okay yeah that's that's the game they play is they'll send you people your way to like to be a rescuer to help you and then okay. they're they're actually handlers and there's a whole yeah. uh, river of handlers that'll come your way i just had to that's cut. another yeah we need to talk about that's that. another one i want to i want to ask you about is handlers big and time. tom hanks and big time. and all this did did you hear the thing with um well, I don't know if it's recent, but I just saw a clip of a while back of uh, like Chappelle calling out Oprah as a handler. No, I didn't that see that one? one yet. Didn't see that one yet. Yeah. So, yeah, I kind of want to ask you what what is a handler? What do they do? Um, but, yeah, if you could, you know, think of think of like our listeners is going, OK, g- give me give, give me, me some the, proof. You know, yeah. Show me. Give me some proof. that says I, I wrote the Matrix right. and and this is. Yeah. Well, so why don't we maybe bounce can lay that. that out? If you have a second, why don't we bounce some of those things right to you? Is there a share screen on here? 
you know, I've never experimented with it and I don't know if there is. Then I'll have to send you ahead of time. I have a visual yeah, that'll work. timeline that addresses these. There's a lot of items that you can choose from, but um, they, they're important because the answer to yes. your question is the person who is actually genuine will have a ton of evidence for critical oh, yeah. thinking and evaluation. The person who's not will just talk away, just talk away. So what you need mm-hmm. is you need a preponderance of visual tactile evidence that can't be refuted, you know, right. and gets by their whole game plan of throwing cases and stuff. So yes. I'm going to send you a, quite a lot of volume. Um, That'd be great. And I'll do it as soon as do we're you, done. Do you have now, and do you have these things like up in a <clears> cloud <throat> storage that you can send links to, or I, I mean, I'm you can still do it either catch, way. Still trying to catch up. I'm putting them on um, external storage devices is where okay. I'm at. I'm dinosaur. So what I'm going to yep. do is I'm going to send you um, basically a chronological order thing that makes sense. Basically, it's, it's a shaping storyboard for our documentary, but it okay. addresses for hosts uh, the answers to questions. Be prepared. Yes. Be prepared because the questions people are going to ask is, why didn't we see this before? The more evidence you have, you probably under, you know in your brother Luke, yes. the more they're going to shut it down and, and, and just, uh, bury it. So, right. and also throw it, throw it in courts by providing their own attorneys, which is part of it too. So you're going to see things with a attorney with suspended license. You're going to see Sophia Stewart, the one that's supposed to uh, handle, it's a handler, and is also uh, looking to be paid off by Kate Chilton, the main person for Warner Brothers. That name has sent that judge on the run. Now she's running immediately. It also revealed one of our um, uh, handling teams. They say teams to handle you, which is okay. connected to the Q group. So we're starting to see a lot of the lights come on on who's actually on what side. And it's our yeah. time to be shrewd as serpents, like you said. Why, you know, why is serpents? And, and, that was, and that was one of the things that, that maybe we can methodically nail down as we go through tomorrow and maybe a, sub, a subsequent talk. Okay. As I was listening to like your interviews with Emma, there was a lot of names that you would throw in and I would go, okay, I'm not sure how that one plays in. Right. So if, if there's a way that uh, – and not that I necessarily want to spend all the time talking about that part of the issue, but when we do address it, um, why don't we lay out a cast of characters? Yeah, yeah, like we can introduce do that. it that way. Yeah, yep, exactly. So I'm going to send you um, these things that'll show all this stuff with the characters, okay. some of the main characters involved. You'll know it ahead of time. What you can do too, okay. um, Pete, is uh, as soon as you get this volume, uh, encyclopedia, or whatever visual encyclopedia, let me know yep. if there's anything you want to discuss. Go over and make sure you are nailed down on what um, yeah. any of these mean. You don't want any of these to slip by because these are all uh, nails in their coffin. That's why and, Joel's and, running. And quite possibly uh, just just for giving time to go over that and then honing in on that specific aspect having to do with your case and all of that. Right. We might We might save that. We might just give like a bird's eye on that tomorrow. Yeah. And then we can dig deep another time. A lot of people do that. And it works out very well that yeah. way. Now, I'm, yeah. I need to get cloud back up because I think that's the way to get all this stuff to you easily. Is that right? So while you're on here right now, let me go to my cloud. So let me see if I can access that. Okay. So I'm going to – it should be connected. While you're doing that, yeah. I'll give you kind of a brief topic rundown. So right. um, intellectual property theft. I kind of wanted to ask you about that. Yes. Like how it's done. How yes. widespread. All of that, Steven Spielberg, <laughs> yes, all that stuff. Yes, um, how you began to be targeted, and then three o twoing someone. If you could yes. um, give a nice a nice definition of that, no problem. What's the tactic? What's the purpose? What's the goal? Um, who's who's ordering it? Um, all that, the honeypot wives thing. Yes. Yes. Um, how does that work? Who do they target? Who's ordering it? How prevalent is it? Uh, it reminds me, if you remember the original Total Recall. Sharon Stone exactly. They put was it, yes. Arnold's play wife. That is the best way to view it. That is exactly right? what they do. Exactly. Yep. That's it. Yeah. No. That's what I thought of. All right. So then um, compromising family members, threats, promising money, like oh, what they did with your yeah. sister. Yeah. Um, and then Hollywood handlers. How does that work? Who does it to whom? All that stuff. Tom Hanks, Ron Howard. Um how was Rockefeller involved? Yeah, we talk a good yeah. bit. Of, we talk we, we talk a good bit about Rockefeller because he's one of the Illuminati bloodlines that Fritz mm-hmm. uh, Springmeier identified. But also, um, he ties into a lot of things. So, so a, a huge part of our show is understanding 
the biblical narrative from the Old Testament. Right, right. From the flood of Noah. And if you don't understand why the flood was sent, connecting back so the days of Noah is is comes from when Jesus says as it as it was in the days of Noah, so it will be when I return. Wow. And what was going on in the days of Noah was in Genesis 6, the angels came down and mated with humans, and they had hybrids. They had the Nephilim, which were giants. And this was how, why the earth became so corrupt, and God had to wipe it out because all flesh had literally become corrupted, even the animals. And it was, li- it was just Noah and his family that hadn't corrupted their DNA yet. And Rockefeller is part tied to that because... That was the Canaanites. So after the flood, the Canaanites in the promised land, um, Israel was supposed to wipe them out and take the promised land. Well, here's these giants. If you remember, the the 12 spies were sent Mm -hmm. and 10 of them came back and said, the land of our it's, itself, we can't do this. And then um, Joshua and, and Caleb were like, no, we can do it. We can totally mm-hmm. win. Well, because of the 10 uh, evil spies, you know, everyone believed them. And so... God made him wander in the wilderness for 40 years. Well, fast forward to 1913, the Federal Reserve System was created, right? right? right. Jekyll Island, Mm -hmm. Georgia. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we had a guy on the show, and he did an interview like 10 years ago with Rob Skiba. I don't know if you ever heard of Rob. Rob Mm. passed away a couple years ago during COVID. They killed him in the hospital. Right. The, the, The book is called The Protocol That Kills. They killed him with the whole ventilator and remdesivir, all that garbage. Anyway. Rob did an interview with Tim Bentz. Tim went down to uh, Jekyll Island, Georgia, and was revealed kind of spiritually that there was a Canaanite blood sacrifice altar underneath Rockefeller's house. Mm -hmm. He built his house Mm -hmm. on top of a blood sacrifice altar. It's like Himmler. And that goes, yep. And that goes right back to Genesis 6 and all these false gods. So, anyway, long story short, that's. That's how this all ties in. <laughs> well, so what's interesting is the Rockefellers were my, um, it, it's weird. I had groomers on the religious right with Pat Robertson directly. Grooming. Yes. And then I end up at the Rockefellers after he tries to cast me out. And um, I end up at the Rockefellers and they don't really, they don't really go through a grooming process. They go through a listening process where they are promoting me to um, what they call it, director, which is above mm-hmm. vice president. So they were enamored with the talents and abilities at the time, because that's why I pitched Matrix Story and Mortals. And so they had brought me in and even said, we don't know if we can even keep you. You'll probably end up on Broadway with all the you know, Hollywood guys and everything. So there's this uh, uh, segments of the same animal, the cabal, where these different organizations, all facets of it, and they trade you back and forth. And what, if you could, if you, what you see from this is the Rockefellers consider themselves one step under the actual powers that control things like Illuminati and um, Catholic yes. church and um, um, Hollywood moguls. Hollywood moguls are not as high up as uh, bank of England, but they told me all these yeah. things, all the facets, they explained it to me while it's being. Yeah. I, we were just going through um, if you, if you've ever heard of uh, Gary Wayne, um, he's an author of the Genesis six conspiracy is the name of his book and his follow is coming out this fall. And we were, we just had him on a second time last week and he was taught, I was asking him, what are the, what is the hierarchy to these bloodlines and Mm -hmm. these, um, Mm -hmm. you know, these secret societies. And so he was explaining, okay, Illuminati. And then above them is like Rosicrucians. And then you got like council of 300. I forget all the stuff he said, but yeah, there's this whole, (laughs) and probably at the very top are like probably non-human, you know, demonic hybrid creatures that's or something. What, that's what one would think. But guess who was really near the top, very top? What's and that? They, but the Vatican gives you the hint right there. And the, yeah. ba- and the different um, societies give it to you. Swiss right. royalty. Swiss, Swiss royalty. royalty. Because they're the ones that nobody would think. Peacemakers, peacemakers, peacemakers. We're actually some of the most toughest dudes you want to meet on the planet as far as um, dealing with warfare. We're the Swiss guards at the Vatican. We were the Swiss guards for Louis the... Um, uh, Marie Antoinette's entourage when they were, you know, the Swiss guards are valued. The Swiss banks are valued. So Swiss royalty are considered the top. That's why I was told that I would watch all other people perish around me and I'd be forced to watch it. Sort of like Spock on his planet, watching the Vulcan planet collapse. They put it in the film that way. 
So it's explained to me that way. So I was groomed to be inside because of the bloodlines. And Jesse will probably talk about the same thing. But it's like, you know, at the same time, I'm supposed to watch. Since I didn't mislead the people, I did the Caesar thing where I said the common people deserve. They call them, you know, you know uh, to be treated well. And that's what's in the screenplay. Part of the reason they cleansed it out. So because of that, I was a traitor to um, the hierarchy and the cabal. I should have been, I'm told, grateful for being who I am and what I was being offered, which was, what was the Wachowskis offered? Beautiful women, fame, fortune. See, they're offered what I was, what I was being um, given by birthright, they say. And then Elon Musk was given my tech. So Elon Musk is now pretending to be me, plastic surgery. He's claiming that when he was five to six years old, he couldn't stop the ideas and things flowing through. I couldn't stop the ideas and things flowing through at five and six. He doesn't have any body of work. And Jesse said that in her affidavit that that she and he were kids at the same watching children get murdered. See, that's it, part it, of that. We just hit yeah. upon visual indoctrination. Yeah. See, and yeah, also, did you have you read her? Have you read her um, sworn testimony? No, she talks to me about it, these different things, but she didn't. There's yeah. a couple PDFs that are available. Okay. On well, on Tim, Timothy Helms, <laughs> Holmes' website. Okay. I can send you that. Well, Elon Musk, crazy. Elon Musk was not a um, hierarchy top person. He was bought in to be a uh, second go claimant. So what, what I'm saying is he is, they bring in, um, which is in the middle, in the screenplay, the original screenplay. You have like an actor, right? A placeholder, yeah, a double, a secondary. So right. secondaries replace primaries. If primaries don't come through, he was specifically my secondary. He's supposed to look like me, talk like me, act like me, absorb whatever I do. And then if I don't come through with my bloodline, then he takes my place and claims all my stuff. So he claimed Neuralink off this work. Okay. Yeah. And and have they done that too, as long as I'm thinking of it? I mean, there's a lot of rumors that Shakespeare was actually Sir Francis Bacon and that Einstein really wasn't who he says he was, that there was someone behind him that had all the ideas. Right, his wife. Yeah. His wife actually came up with a lot of the ideas we're being told yeah. now. And yeah. as far as Shakespeare, um, it's very possible. I was on international Shakespeare tours, and they were discussing this all the time. It's very possible that it was a um, compilation of different um, uh, geniuses, basically putting stuff yes. in. Yes, actually, Gary Wayne and I haven't edited and posted the show yet, but he he just last week was talking about how the name Shakespeare, the origin came uh to francis bacon from it was it was crafted exactly you know, exactly crafted. like yes. elon musk's name yes. so there's a lot of oh, people like that yeah yeah um another one a topic to cover is just how sick and evil hollywood is you know you as being kind of an insider to talk about that um the well, elite yeah. uh, I was yeah. going to say that um, Hollywood, when we touch upon it or we hit it, when we hit it, yeah. um, we need to understand what I was told by the um, one of the top, top guys that was offering me the, you know, uh, resorts, um, 10 days, t- take 10 people out, fly out, be a script doctor, be the richest guy in Hollywood. When he was offering me that, he told me these Hollywood goons are, these hierarchy are nothing in the strata. They are simply um, basically fat old men that are um, it, taking the rewards and all the honors and rewards and riches and young women and stuff and boys. Yep. That's what they are. So they're not really, they're not considered in, um, um, eye to eye with the establishment of the cabal. They're right. considered um, sludge. They're not, we're not respected. They're not respected at all. So they're simply yeah, they're, grab ups like Elon's doing. They're, they're, yeah. They're, they're, they're kept happy. Exactly. Right? Exactly. It's, it's, it's similar to the politicians that, you know, they'll control them by, by yeah. compromise, put him, put him with an underage person and get it on video. Now you're bought, you're controlled right. and, oh, you like that? Oh, I can provide that for you. I can provide that and protection. Right. So um, if you've ever heard of Fiona Barnett, she was an SRA traffic survivor in Australia. She said that the, the pedophilia is a cover and, and, and it's all the other layers. It's the, it's the spiritual ritual abuse. It's the power seeking. Is what's so when they when people see those like you said they they'll they'll throw a few people under the bus they'll do a sting and say see we're helping right and and society goes oh that's so awful I'm glad they caught them and meanwhile there's ten deeper layers there's deep underground exactly. military bases there's 
you know, these rituals going on where, you know, Satan's building an army. He's he, that's what the UFO program is. Abduct abductees are, are getting their sperm and eggs taken. They're creating hybrids. And then these SRA victims are literally, um, some in some cases are bred to be Nephilim mothers Mm -hmm. where they're creating, Mm -hmm. they're, they're having sex with demons, with fallen angels. Right. Well, so, that's, that's, so Satan's, tr- yeah, there's a project. Sorry about that. There's a project going on yeah. where, um, they're trying to see, uh, which humans, people, whatever we want to classify ourselves as not to get lost in the titling, but yeah. which ones will match up better with which other, um, sex. Um, hmm. uh, so they're trying to, it's like the Russians breeding, um, gymnasts and during the cold war, you know, so okay. it's like bloodlines being brought together specifically to create a certain kind of athlete. Or things like yes. that. And so that's exactly what's going on right now in the intellectual uh, side of this coin, where they're now mm-hmm. trying to put geniuses together, male and female. And also they gar- gauge it on how we appear, how we come across. And it really okay. messes with your mind. And um, that's why I have to be very careful about, like you see, it goes back to honeypot wives. Yeah. See, And um, it's basically honeypot wives is also part of a breeding program. It's almost like wow. Laban's born. Wow. Where they That's cast incredible. you, they cast you in life and they play gods yeah. over you. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. Um, yep. And then, uh, the elite. So bloodlines, assets versus fodder, you said on one of the shows. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. And that you were saying that's why you're still alive because they know you've got all these other um, scripts and screenplays. <laughs> well, let's talk about that. Let's talk about what keeps yeah. what keeps the target alive. Because one of the accusations okay. they're throwing now is why is he still alive? You may have heard me say that. And it's like, yeah. well, if you know how to they call it a game. If you know how to play it out and reverse the tables on what they fear most and what they want most and hold that back from like cookie jar out of their reach then they will okay. stay alive and your loved wow. ones will stay alive, the surviving ones. Okay. So I would love to talk about that. Yep. Yep. All right. I wrote that down. What keeps the target alive? Mm-hmm. What they can um, do. Freemasonry. What was your experience? What did you see here? What were you told? Uh, yeah. How'd you get out? Right. How long were you in it? Right. Um, Which have goes- you renounced it? You know, and I know that like that can be that can be an open doorway for demonic to come in and you know, it's visual indoctrination, like so- visual indoctrination at a higher level. Is what you just hit on. Yeah. Yeah. So we can frame it that way. Um, And then, okay, Pat Robertson's a big one because I know there are going to be skeptical people out there who look up to him and Mm -hmm. and think that he was standing up for a lot of conservative things. So if if there's, you know. Let's hit upon. Yeah. Council Presbyterian Church. Let's hit upon that. Bring whatever would. Yeah. The best. Um. Things that either can be corroborated or or you've had firsthand or what have you. Okay. Um, um, all right. I'm going to move that one thing up then so you can see yep. it. Okay. Very good. Okay. Pat Robertson letter. That'd be helpful. Elser letter. And I just. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. I just went to the Wikipedia for him just to refresh my memory and I printed it in my notes here. I'm going to send you some um, images directly connected to him. And it'll be mind blowing how he has part of this one world um, order society land and uh yeah. it'll blow your mind well so did you hear of uh ravi zacharias when he passed away the the evangelist minister guy that he had all sorts of skeletons in his closet i don't know if you heard about that no he died like a year or two ago well you're gonna find a lot of people that were oh, um man. completely um th- th- basically right across the board for televangelists it was just too much for them to handle too tempting and it was too easy for um, everything from women, boys, wine, money, uh, wealth, dynasty. It's so sad. I mean, Ravi had such a brilliant mind. He, you know, he would he would speak at colleges to university students, and he was so articulate and well looked up to. And his books are fantastic. And then all this stuff comes out and people, after he died and people were like, yeah, he had a habit of going to these massage parlors and he would manipulate women. Sure. And, yep. oh, it's crazy. That's right. You know, and, and, and it's like, what's the phrase I'm thinking of? Like, you know, giant building, but giant destroying, like we can't hold up anybody, you know, well, we because can. you we just can. don't know. We can, we can hold up each other. Each other, but I mean, like, oh, there's this great figure and he's a giant of the faith. You know, we just don't know. Well, that's another topic to bring up is that the PR has, if they have PR grooming and media coverage, 
then they're part of the system. It's very simple. If you do not have PR coverage and are not part of the system, not groomed by the media, you're not part of the system. They have a telltale heart right there. They show you. They let you know. And that's why they like to field that question from the people publicly going, why haven't we heard of this before? Because that's why. If we haven't heard of it before, it's because it's actually important. And they wanted to shut it down and bury it. Okay. If you so hear that, it a lot. So yeah. that, means we ought, that means we ought to be, our default ought to be skeptical about people like, you know, um, gosh, his name just escaped me. The Elon guy Musk. out at Saddleback. Yeah. No, I'm thinking of like famous pastors, you know. Oh, absolutely. Sa- Saddleback. Absolutely. In California yeah. and stuff like that. Because, yeah, they're either watering down their message or they're keeping them protected. Well, another reason, another thing you just pointed out, if they're in Hollywood, situated in Hollywood and thriving, not good. No one's going to thrive in Hollywood unless they're bought in the system. They're part of Bohemian Grove. You're not going to have anybody in their hometown where they yep. control and where their nest is. They won't let people in their, their den unless you're, you've are you accepted what they want you to uh, uh, lift up and be part of. Interesting. Um, Many of them are. Okay. Yeah. Um, another another uh, facet of uh, the pedo stings in Hollywood and Disney. Oh yeah, um, yeah, lower level stings. I don't know. Have you heard anything about the allegation with Tom Hanks? There's this lady Sarah Ruth Ashcraft that says that um, she was sold to him at 13 years old. Have you heard any? You're going to hear things like this. And what I'm, my first gut instinct, Pete, without knowing all the facts on that, with what I now have on Tom Hanks in our situation which has sent that judge running. Here's one thing. When they run from the news breaking, that they're just showing you're guilty. It's like this. If they stay seated, like this particular judge, and doesn't run, then they're not worried about that topic. If we bring up something about Tom Hanks having the copyright uh, being commissioned to write, ordered and commissioned to write my screenplay, right before Matrix comes out, and the judge runs, there's something to it. So they let you know. They're cowards. They run when they're guilty, when they're caught, when it's being shown. So if she doesn't run when this brought forward about Tom Hanks having this other girl, then I would discount. I would my my first thing would be I'm going to look at this. I need really good proof on it because if the if they haven't run yet, cowards they are, then they're not worried about it. When they're worried, they run. They don't take a chance. They run. They can't take what they dish out. Okay, yeah, I don't. I didn't know if you had any insight on that one, but that that makes sense as far as how to vet it. Um, That's how I look at I it. I just first first yeah. Thing. Okay. Um, and then Disney, um, like you mentioned about Eisner changing the copyright laws and how that benefited him. The mothership and, of intellectual property ripoff. They are the fathers yeah, and, of it. Yep. And, and why that matters. And then, um, you talked about kind of like your experience with God. Do you prayed that prayer? Yes. And you felt like you got, got some very direct answers. So yes. that'd be cool to talk about. Yes. Um, Oh, and then CPS and F- FPI, how they work together. Yes. Um, the CPS being weaponized by the FBI, how they destroy families and steal children, 302 the parents. Yep. And the device thing uh, where you have the um, ear messing on the, only the right ear, not the left ear. It's unbelievable where the vans come up oh. and trigger it. And it's actually, they tested it on the embassies in Cuba where they did Whoa. it on the Canadian embassy and the U.S. embassy. So, okay. yeah. I, I haven't heard of that yeah, one. Yeah, I've got I'm that write one. write down the... Uh, it's, here it's how you disturb the person that um is your target where they will uh, actually insert it um through a um little incision in the ear and then a, a saturated q-tip allows the um, nanobites to go in or nanotech and that's what's so, so important this is a nanobot it's nano it's it's electronic receivers and transmitters and um med- oh, wow. medical tech it's medical nano nano wow and um we we have that's i'll special. be showing you the thing from steven spielberg's as we say minority yep. report where he does pre-crime um, you'll yes. see it in there. You'll see it after he's saying about my son will die in a pre-crime and about how uh, my dad's rank and name is the main character Tom Cruise's plays. Yes. That's not in Philip K. Dick's novel. You see on the next page, nanotech beyond our wildest dreams. Wow. Yep. Yep. And that's my next bullet point here is um, examples of mocking you in films and shows, Matrix, Binary God, Court. Man High Castle. Um, yeah. Yep. Real intent of the red pill, blue pill. Yes, that's, thank you. That'll be fascinating. Yes, yep. thank you. And then you mentioned uh, death coach, death coaches. Yes, for trans yes. euthanasia yes. by Warner Brothers in Hollywood. And they started death coaching first on Maui in this country. It's in Maui. 
The very attorney okay. who threw my case that had a suspended license is the one that went right the, from there to being a lucrative income off of death coaches, representing death coaches. Wow. Yeah, that's how you also get. Yeah. Okay, and then and then of course your court case, how they rigged it. Oh God, yeah. Documents. God, yeah. What and what you're doing about it now, your documentary and all that stuff. So. Yeah. Those are the bullets. We'll see how much we get through, and if uh, <laughs> you're talking and maybe we, five shows right now because to cover it, yeah, yeah, I know, <laughs> which is fine. I don't care. I don't care if you got the time. We'll we'll do a thing that's uh, definitive. So that's fine. Yeah, I'm, no, that I'm sounds to, good. You know. That's that's what I try to do. Like I like to listen to what what other people have covered, mm-hmm. and then and then I like to um, go deeper on them because. So that you're not saying the same old things every time, because right, I want it right. to be, I want it to be unique, and I want it to be instructive. Like, you know, when I first reached out to you and I said, you know, we're about exposing evil. That's part of it, but the other part is like, we're tr- we're trying to learn what systems are in place so right. we know our enemy, right. enemy, right, and, and what we're what we're up against. Because, uh, well, that means I, I won't have to. Is, yeah, go ahead. The time is growing short. It is. I won't have to talk that fast either. A lot of us we that actually have all this information, we talk very fast, not just because we think fast, but because we yes. only have a short time frame to convey it. And there's an urgency behind it and a need to get it oh, out. Oh, no. Just, so yeah, spreading it out um, allows me to slow it down a bit. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and me just being naturally uh, curious, I like to ask a lot of questions. I probably won't move on from, say, intellectual property theft, theft mm-hmm. Honeypot Wives, 302. I won't sure. move on from that topic until I, my curiosity is saturated. Good, good. So, so we will hit, yeah, we will hit each one real well before we move on. See the, so. Yeah, because throwing the court case is a show in itself. And it's so important, and they're very afraid yes. of that being out. They wanted to bury that one. That's why we've got that main judge on the run now, Kate Chilton, the one that put Elon Musk in place. So, yeah, the main judge that, put, that coordinated the agencies with Disney, with the religious right, and also with um, Elon Musk, uh, appointed Sophia Stewart, appointed the Wachowskis, worked with Joel Silver on this, and uh, Eisner. Yeah, it's all one person, and now she's on the run. They do have huh. queens on the chessboard, they call it. Are you, um, in addition to the documentary, are you also doing a book? Yes. Like, are you, are you laying all this? Okay. <clears throat> yeah, the playbook for the cabal. Yep. Awesome. Yeah, that, that'd be really good. I mean, just to kind of, to, to have your insight on all that I yeah, think would be really good. Yeah, I have good. to bring that out. So, okay. Well, I think we got a good plan, Tom. And uh, I recorded this, so <laughs> this can be a little bonus episode here. <laughs> You're right, for patrons, whatever. It's like, this is very important. This information, you just archived it or set it down for future generations, because in the future, they're going to need primary sources. Us discussing this was key. Very important. The right hearts discussing it, laying it out, no holds bar. Hey guys, let me tell you about Zencaster, the podcasting recording software that I use. Right from your laptop or desktop web browser, you can record audio, video, or both, and you're on your way to making podcast history. The nice thing about it is it records a local backup on your browser cache as well as in the cloud. So even if you have some unstable internet connection issues, it's continuing to record you and your guests in the cloud for you to download at the end of your recording. A friend of mine from another podcast turned me on to Zencaster and I've never looked back. 
One thing I like about it is just how easy it is to use. You can share the link with your guests. They don't have to download any software or subscribe to anything or sign up. Another great thing about Zencaster is it's totally free to use. Although if you would like to do post-production editing of your audio and video, you can do that right on Zencaster with one of their affordable paid plans. Now me personally, I use my own audio software to do my editing for the show. And I just use Zencaster Creator Plus, which is a free account, in order to record the audio with my guests. But if you'd like to get started with one of the paid plans and take advantage of all the features that Zencaster has to offer, to get started, go to Zencaster.com slash pricing. That's Z-E-N-C-A-S-T-R dot com slash pricing. And use my code, Genesis6, that's Genesis and the number 6, and you'll get 30% off your first month of any Zencaster page paid plan. I want you to have the same easy experience as I do for all my podcasting and content needs. It's time to share your story.